Hand loaders, bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. Hey folks, y'all have been, you know, encouraging me for quite a while to start powder coating. In fact, I saw a comment on a video this morning where, you know, just uh, another viewer just said, Hey, Ledsmith, why don't you try powder coating? <laughs> so anyways, but my whole deal this whole time has been, well, if what I have works, I'm going to stick to it, and I have had nothing but great things to say about, you know, my traditional lubing methods with the pistol bullets and that sort of thing I've been working with, but I'm working with rifle now, and they haven't been quite as forgiving with my standard method, so I said, okay, well, if we have a need for, you know, some kind of different method, then it's time to start thinking out of the box, so folks... I hope you will enjoy this, but this is my first attempt to powder coat. I've never powder coated anything in my life, but I am going to be starting with these bullets. And I've got a lot of little doodads here. Some of the stuff I'm pretty sure I'm going to use. Some I'm not sure I'm going to use. But I got them just in case I decide that that is the way to go. So, in this video, you will be able to witness all my little uncoordinated efforts Hopefully I don't make a big mess. Hopefully I don't melt my bullets. Hopefully I don't burn my house down. But hey, you never know. We're going to find out together. And in the end, hopefully we'll have some pristinely perfect bullets. But we might not. There could be some problems. And if you're new to hand loading and that sort of thing, I think it's very good to approach it with the mindset that whatever it is that you try, you measure the success based off of what you learned because that's always going to factor in to, you know, ultimately building the perfect load. So I might, you know, have some pretty miserable results today. We don't know. We're going to find out together. Uh, but what I do know is I'm going to learn a great deal. Now, I already had this toaster oven because... You know, I, I do heat treat bullets from time to time and I'll run them in there for, you know, 425 degrees, maybe a little bit less, uh, which is pretty hot. So I've spent a little bit of time off camera just kind of calibrating in 400 degrees on this toaster because it sounds like that is everyone's recommendation. The powder that I'm going to be using actually was given to me by CW. And this is something that uh, he received from John's hand loading. And they both seem to think that uh, this is a great powder for me to start with. So I'm looking very much forward to it. I bought some Ford Light Blue uh, recently. But if I got guys like CW saying, hey, give this powder a try. Man, I'm dropping the Ford Light Blue and I'm going to try whatever CW says. And I chatted with John a little bit today and he said he was really glad that CW sent me this so I'm really looking forward to you know getting into this and seeing exactly how this is gonna come out so I'm gonna go ahead and get this toaster oven warming up uh, so that we can have some uh, really awesome let's see yeah we'll go with this stay on so that we can get up to heat and I won't waste too much time I've got this little guy right here. Uh, this is a, I might use it, I might not. Uh, this idea ultimately I think originated from New York City Reloader, NYC Reloader. And I believe this is the exact same ones that he used. He posted a link in one of his videos about it, so check them out. Um, the link, I'm not sure if it's still a good link anymore, but they can still be found very easily. Uh, I've heard a lot of recommendations for using airsoft pellets as kind of a way to help build up the static electricity. I've heard some people say that, you know, they work really well. Some people say they notice no difference. Again, now we've got a number five container. Seems like number two and number five are kind of the, you know, the big, the big ones to look for. Again, it has to do with what's going to help generate static electricity to help those bullets uh, you know, or, or to help the powder adhere to the bullets. So uh, I've heard it's not necessary, but I think I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I'm definitely going to use those that Rubbermaid and 
these spoons that I got from CW. Beautiful spoons. <laughs> this way I can reach down in the bag and not get my grubby fingers in there. So let's see if I can get you a, a little bit of a close-up. I'll show you some of these bullets that we're going to work with today. Now these are all destined for a CZ527 and 7.62 by 39. And this is a gas check style bullet with a flat point. I have yet to load any of these bullets or work up a load. Um, so I'm going to do some traditional lube with a gas check and some of them powder coated with a gas check. And I've also got these, which is a 145 grain Elvis bullet. And, uh, you know, the problem with this one and traditional lube, it's got a very small lube groove. So I have had some trouble. I'm hoping this powder coating is going to be a remedy for that. Now, before I just dump a bunch of bullets in here and start uh, swishing them around in powder, um, I'm going to clean them up with a little bit of acetone. So I'm going to give them a little acetone bath, and we will see uh, once they're dry. I've heard that uh, the powder has a difficult time adhering to bullets that are not perfectly degreased. The cap is the worst part so far. Oh, I'm already making a mess. Yeah. Like, like I said, we're going to call this episode The Lead Smith Makes a Mess. So, hey, that's all right. We'll just switch these around in here for a bit. I'll clean up my mess. Probably shouldn't be letting that happen around, you know, flaming oven, but it is what it is, folks. So there's the acetone. Whoop. All kinds of excitement going on here today. You see, I'm thinking I'm not going to pour this stuff down the drain. These bullets shouldn't have been all that bad to start with, so I'll probably just kind of funnel it right back into that can if I can open it without it exploding on me. That's a good question. Okay, and of course after this, this is when I want to be hands off. So if I'm going to use gloves, and that's going to be the time to do it. Alright, got the pasta strainer. And let's see if we can get this done with some reasonable success. But again, this is one of those kind of deals where you figure out what worked, what didn't work, and then you adjust. Wow, boy, they got that thing filled slap to the top of the brim. Which I guess I'm getting my money's worth, but probably not so much if I'm spilling it. I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. Okay, I'm going to take these bullets and just lay them out here. I'm going to try to avoid touching them from this point on. I do have some tweezers. I uh, got this idea from Lever Action Gypsy. He says there's two kinds of powder coaters. He says there are basket cases and there are tweezer geezers. Well, I had to pick which one I wanted to be, so I decided I'm going to be a tweezer geezer because uh, I really would like to make sure I don't have bullets sticking together or any of those sort of deals that I'm hearing about a lot with the basket method. 
um, Elvis Ambo, he really promotes that. And, you know, I like watching him from time to time, but I just don't think that that method is going to be for me. So yeah, we're going to let these things dry. I'm going to cut this fan on and we'll get on with the powder coat. So I really feel like this is probably, you know, plenty dry enough. So I think it's a uh, time that uh, we crack open this powder. I'm going to open up some of these little airsoft pellets and we'll just see if uh, I can do this much without making a mess. But yeah, there is a reason for the title of this video, folks. Because I knew it was going to happen. Alright. I guess that's good. I don't need a whole lot more than that. Let's see. Now, John's hand loading. Powder coating powder. And I don't know, I think you told me, but I can't remember. I don't know what this particular powder is called. Um, we're just going to find out you know, how it does. I said a lot of good things about it, how it coats real easy and all that good stuff. So, you know, I'm excited to see for myself. All right. So now we've got us a bag inside a bag. This is where I am going to need one of these fine spoons that CW was so kind enough to spoon me with. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure how much I want to put in there. I don't think I have to do a whole lot. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to put a little bit in there, get it started, and I might add some more. You know, it's kind of like the same concept of, I mean, it's basically like a paint. So, you know, you shouldn't apply all of your paint all in one shot. You know, sometimes you got to do it little bits at a time. Maybe I'm going about it wrong or overthinking it. But, you know, when you're new at something and you don't really have a technique that's established, then you're not really sure what's super critical and what's not. You might find yourself placing too much emphasis on things that are, you know, not necessary and not enough emphasis on things at all. So, time to shake, shake, shake. Just so you know, this is one of the reasons that I was reluctant to try powder coating. Uh, it just never did sit right with me. The Lee Tumble Lube method where you do this similar thing. You go to all that work to cast the best, prettiest bullets that you can. And then you're, you know, <laughs> shaking them around. By the way, I really like the length of that spoon. That thing was awesome. And a spoon, honestly, wasn't something that I gave any thought to. So I'm pretty happy that there's folks out there like CW that'll be like, you know, he, he's going to need one of these. He don't know it yet. Let's see what we got. Okay. Well... I feel like we've got some good coverage, but I think I want to do a little bit more. I see some bare spots. So we're going to do another little spoonful here. So I'll just go and go until it seems like, you know, I can't really do too much more. This stuff, I'm told, absorbs a lot of moisture real quick. 
so you know I don't want this thing sitting open. I didn't think about a way to seal the bag before I started, so now I'm going to go see if I can find something to clip this thing shut. Okay, so now we're closed off and sealed up real good. And also, you know, humidity is a thing around here in Georgia. I didn't hear anybody recommend that I get these little O2 absorbent pads, uh, but... It seemed like a good idea. At least it'll make me feel better. So when we get all done with this, I'm probably going to take like three of these and just chunk them in that bag. Okay, let's see what we got here now. A little bit more tape. Tape. So I'm seeing some improvement there. I'm going to keep on with the shaking though. And I did think about, you know, round instead of squared for this reason. me that was something that was kind of hard learned about hand loading in the beginning is I wanted good results right away I wanted to be able to follow a recipe that appeared to be proven and everything work out but most of the time it wasn't quite like that there was almost always some variables that make one person's situation different from another and I don't see where powder coating will be any different. So, I think it's time to be a tweezer geezer and see what we got. Now, I learned this part from Lever Action Gypsy and he would just kind of take his tweezers and there's a lot of excess powder on some of this stuff. And he would take his tweezers, just pick up a bullet and see if you look at it, it's, it, there's a lot of stuff on there. So, whoop. So we're just going to shake that off. And if I can do this with them all standing, I think that would be ideal. Because I really want to be able to do this without the ice tray. Whoop. Just simply because, in my mind, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like the little walls of that ice tray might interfere with the powder coating. And some people have pointed out that they have had some issues, but not everyone has. So, again, it's just kind of like one of them things. That powder is on there pretty thick. Uh, the main reason why I bought that spaghetti strainer, pasta strainer, was because I thought I might use it to shake the powder off. I might end up doing that. Okay, some of the clumpiness did bother me. So I think I am going to go ahead and try using that pasta strainer and it might not be an issue but it certainly caught my attention so what I'll do is try not to make another mess but uh, you know if I do make one I'm blaming all of you guys who have encouraged me powder coat <laughs> all right so 
I'm just going to kind of shake it up here. I've seen one other guy do this. And I don't really know why others don't. But I might find out. And I'm sure some of you guys will leave comments. And I'm really looking forward to those comments. Also, it was recommended to me to not reuse the powder coating. You know, so this stuff is going to end up, you know, getting disposed of. The reason for that is just the humidity. They, some folks, you know, live in a pretty humid environment. And for all I know, that might be why I'm getting some of that clumping. And uh, I've suggested to, you know, just go ahead and do away with it. Because, you know, there's plenty of that powder to be had. You're not really hurting yourself. So, okay. We're going to do this again. I got my little oven thermometer sitting in there. I should have thought about that the first time around. Um, but I did not. And uh, I was about to use parchment paper for this. And that might have been a dumb idea. I opened up the pantry to grab some and pulled out the box and the first thing I saw in the box was a big old warning that said do not use in a toaster oven so yeah I decided to use aluminum foil instead I tell you what so for every single bullet that I pick up carefully and make a point to sit down with purpose you know I could have already sized it and lubed it in my Lyman 45 so I'm going to say that is one of the reasons why I have been reluctant to get into powder coating. So I was watching one guy set of videos and he did a really good job, had some really great results. And I commented and I said, boy, that seems like an awful lot of work compared to just putting them in a good old fashioned Lyman 45 and, and lubing and sizing them. <laughs> 